You may have times where you want to edit some material properties on assets that have already been authored to USD. Instead of going back into the original USD file, you have methods of doing that here in LOPS. We're going to go ahead and take a look at them. So right now, I'm going to start our render here, and you can see that we've got our red material assigned here via Karma. But what if we wanted to just change that texture map out and keep everything else the same? One way we can do this is with an edit material properties here. So I would connect that down there and I'm going to go and find my material, which is that mech. And I happen to know that the image that the diffuse map is part of here is that material X image one, uh, instead of the preview materials here, I want to grab that one. I'm going to drag that right into here and I can choose to create parameters. Now it has auto filled the stuff that it had in the USD file. And if I want to overwrite that, I just need to choose set or create. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose my texture map here. I'm going to make sure I'm on UDIMS and I'm going to choose my dirty green base color here. Now this won't affect the GL view because I haven't overwritten any of the GL stuff. But when I go to render it, what we'll see is that we have overridden what base texture map is assigned to that shader just with this little lop right here. The other way that we can do this is to completely fetch the material network, have Houdini rebuild it, and then make whatever alterations we would like to make inside the network. And to do that, we want to choose an edit material network. So I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to highlight that. The material path, I'm going to grab my Mac and I'm going to load that in here and choose load. Now I'm going to dive in first before I choose load. You can see it's empty. Once I choose load, I dive inside and you can see that it has created the entire network for that material that the red texture map was assigned to. So now if I go into my material X image here, which was the base color, by the way, in case you were wondering about the numbers, that's where they came from. I can select our file name here and I can go into our texture folder and grab our dirty green base color here. And I will leave everything else the same. Uh, you will notice here that the preview diffuse color hasn't been set either. So we can see if this will update for us. We'll give it a shot. It may not update here. But let's go ahead and do our render. And we can see now that our changes have updated here in the render. I'm going to let this render and just to prove this is actually working, we'll go and grab the orange texture map here. So we'll go find our side effects orange base color, grab that, and you can see that that's right in there. So those are two quick ways that you can go and make material adjustments on assets that have already been authored. You can either rebuild the material completely, change things out, add new components, swap things as necessary, or you can target individual components of your material and alter them only as needed. Now there is one other way that you can set these kind of uh, properties, and that is with a wrangle here. You can use USD expressions uh, and little bits of code inside a wrangle here. And it works very similarly to how some of the other stuff is done. So basically I'm just grabbing the material X image and putting it into our primitives here. And then I'm using this USD set attribute, uh, expression here. And the way that that works, it's asking, what is the stage that's coming in? That's our current stage, which primitive am I looking for? Uh, S at prim path means give us the path of the primitive that we're currently iterating over, which is going to be that one. And which attribute would you like to set? So if I select this and I look down over here, I see that I have this attribute called inputs colon file, 
which is pointing to the red texture set. Let's see if we can see all of that here. Uh, yes, pointing to the base color texture set here. So what I'm doing over here now is I am reassigning it to our side effects orange texture set. And just to show you that that's working, we'll look at it with the dome light here. So red is looking just fine. And then when we go here to our VEX, we see that we've replaced that with the orange texture. So there is this third way of doing it. It's a little less accessible than the first two that we looked at. But this can be really useful if you want to do things uh, at scale and using code rather than some of the other ready-made nodes. One thing that's a little bit tucked away is how to alter properties of your objects here for rendering. For example, how do I turn this into a matte object? How do I stop it from casting shadows? How do I change the type of motion blur that it's using? Well, there's one way to do this, and it is called a render geometry settings lop. So if we put this down here, I'm going to enable it, and I'm going to tell it that I would like to work on our mech geo here. I'm going to start our karma render so that we can see what it looks like before we do anything. And what I'm going to do is go all the way down to our shading mode and enable render visibility. Now, right now, a star means it's visible to every kind of ray possible, but I can change this to only primary rays, for instance, and now we get no shadows. Or I can change it to invisible to primary rays, phantom object. So you can see that we don't render our object at all, but we do get the shadows and we get any bounce light and reflections off of that. I'll set this back to visible for all. We also have a matte mode here for holdout. I can choose to create that and I can use this and you can see we're matting out our background here. The reason we still see our background rendering is because I have that enabled there. There are a lot of useful options here, and it's definitely worth going through and seeing what's here. There's stuff for lights, stuff for geometry, uh, stuff that controls the displacement quality of your objects. You have individual settings for limits on reflections and refractions per object as well as sampling quality. And then you can alter velocity settings here as well. So some really, really useful and important options on this node. Now, the other node that you can use to influence some of what's happening here is called an edit properties. Not prototypes, we want properties right here. And this allows us to edit various USD properties that are used for rendering. So let's go ahead and do one. We'll go ahead and grab our mech geo here and we'll choose to edit properties. We get this window that's here. And for instance, on this one, what I want to do is edit the subdivision scheme. So I type subdivision and I find our subdivision scheme. I'm going to just install it like that and click accept. And now you see our subdivision scheme is set to Catmull Clark. We could change this to none if we want to as well. And what you'll notice is that on our geo here, our subdivision scheme has been updated to none. Currently it had nothing, had no, no subdivision scheme assigned. So we were not subdividing it at render time. Now we've told it you can subdivide at render time, but please explicitly do not. And now here we're telling it, please do subdivide and use Catmull Clark subdivisions. We can try a little render if we want, but this is a very, very ugly mesh. It's not modeled for subdivision at all, but why not take a quick look and see if there's any difference here. Yep. 
yeah, hopefully we're not seeing any anything wrong, but certainly isn't modeled to be using subdivisions here. <laughs>